The general process of clam resist dyeing in Chinese jiaxie is to clamp a piece of folded fabric between a pair of engraved blocks, then get it dyed. In the dyeing sink, the fabric that tightly clamped by the wood block cannot be dyed because the dye liquor cannot penetrate through. However, the dye liquor can seep into the hollowed engraved patterns, and thus the unique resistant patterns can emerge. Upon removal of the blocks, the exquisite patterns will be revealed on the fabric. In Chinese, jia means press from both sides or a place in between. And jia is the basic technique of clamp resist dyeing. Xie stands for the final fabric with the revealed patterns. There are also other kinds of resist dyings such as tie dyeing, wax resist dyeing, ash resist dyeing, and etc. But among them, the most complicated one with highest dyeing techniques is the clamp resist dyeing. The technique of clamp resist dye is complicated, and it mostly comprises five parts. Engraved wood block. There are three basic forms of engraved wood blocks: concave hole plate, relief plate, and engraving hole plate. Fabric. The fabric used for clamp resist dyeing could be twill damask. Lin, simple gauze sha, complex gauze luo, plain weave juan, damask on plain weave qi, regular silk cho, ripped tabby shi, and other kinds of silks. Besides, cotton is always used for clamp resist dyeing in the southern Zhejiang area. Dye. Most of the dyes used for clamp resist dyeing are traditional plant dyes, but some also use chemical dyes. Dyeing technique: the ways of dyeing and developing patterns include injection dyeing, immersion dyeing, weaving and printing dyeing, and printing and drawing dyeing. Color: there are single colored and multicolored clamp resist dyeings. The multicolored clamp resist dyeing. Is also named Wu Cai Jia Xie in Chinese. China National Silk Museum was founded in 1992. Beside the near the West Lake in Hangzhou, our museum is one of the first state-level museums in China. We explore the meaning of silk from its very early origin, back to 5,000 years ago, then to the ancient silk roads that put the silk. As one of the most important commodities, and then to the modern and the contemporary fashion in every moment of our daily life. Moreover, we also have the best team of curators, scientists, and conservators for the textile in China, or even in the world. The technique of scrap resist dye, known as Chinese jiaxie. Was invented in Tang Dynasty. In 1991, I visited Wenzhou and studied at Jiaxi. Actually, that was my first time to know the real Jiaxi, real scrap resist dyed cotton in blue and white color in China. After that time,、uh, this technique in China became the state level intangible cultural heritage. Then, in 2008. I went to Tibet again. In Tibet, we found another type of the jiaxie silk, that's the colorful jiaxie silk or jiaxie technique. In recent years, we hold exhibitions named "Resist Dye on the Silk Roads" in 2014, and organize workshop during the 2019 Biennial of Nature Dyes. Right now, we are trying to make. The reproduction of the Tang Dynasty jiaxie or cramp resist dye, based on the Dunhuang textile materials, we hope more people can know about jiaxie, more people can learn, even can use the jiaxie, the cramp resist dye technique in our daily life. 根据文献记载，家鞋最早是唐玄宗时期柳婕妤的妹妹发明的。在当时是一种比较高档的彩色印花丝织品
，家协始于唐代，也甚于唐代。我们敦煌莫高窟藏经洞就出土了不少精美的家协，日本镇仓院也完整的保存了五彩家协。由于这种印染工艺依赖于精巧的雕版技术，且仿染的过程比较繁琐，到了宋代就日渐式微。明清时期则更是少见。故宫博物院有一件果蔬家协包袱布，西藏有一批用作唐卡防尘的家协绢，在印度的 c a l i c o Museum 也收藏有家协，这些仍然是彩色的。但是到了近现代，五彩家协的工艺失传了，只有蓝家协技艺还孱弱地传承于浙南地区，有幸得到了国家的保护。进入了国家非物质文化遗产名录。During the 2019 Biennial of Natural Dyes in China National Silk Museum, a clay precise dyeing craftsman from Wenzhou performed this technique. The participants also experienced the following processes of making clay precise dyeing. First, rinse the cutting cloth. Second, squeeze out the water. Third, fold and then roll up the cotton cloth. Fourth, fold and put the cloth between two wood blocks. Then immerse the cloth and blocks into the dyed liquor. In the end. Unfold the clamp wood block, bring out the cloth, and dry it under the sun. There is still a lot more to explore about clamp resist dye. For example, why the old skill of multicolor clamp resist dye got lost in history, and how contemporary scholars bring it back, and how did this technique spread into India and Japan? There are more stories waiting to be revealed and told. Please don't forget to follow our social media account to get to know more about Chinese textiles. And you are always welcome to visit China National Silk Museum in Hangzhou and join in our workshops.